Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Download Youth Ministry web show, still in uh, yeah, temporary transition. phase. This is uh, episode 224. We'll be transitioning for the next <clears throat> six months. I don't know. We're, we're, in, we're in Download Youth Ministry um, headquarters. Right. And we just really haven't moved Evidence in Evidence by yet. my little key tag. That's right. right. So yeah. fancy. Yep. Yeah. Well, you're I trying have, to crank it. Oh, do so I have one right here? Oh, we all have them. That's <laughs> Katie, oh, you mean, Katie, oh, you mean this? I, <laughs> I have a sticker name tag that says Muhammad on it. So <laughs> That's cool. right. Katie is Katie I'm is kind of Muhammad. Changing religions. Uh-huh. Hey, you guys. Um, Sting like a butterfly. There is. We're going to do a live show. <laughs> we're going to do a live show at YS. <laughs> yeah. Which we're all going down. We this need week? to just say is that this thank you, YS. I know. It is our primary, primary sponsor. sponsor. Why yes. We love you. We really don't have our... We need to... We would be pointing to an awesome yeah. sign right yeah, now. Yeah, we're going to have yeah. after construction. Uh, you know, yeah. this is just kind of a... A throwaway show? No. It's, no, it's a good show. A throwaway set. Yes. Yeah, throwaway yeah, set. The throwaway show will be this, this Saturday when we do it live. <laughs> right. No, it's going to be great. <laughs> last Katie, time Katie was great. It. Free Katie pizza? We had so much fun last time. Is there free pizza this time? On the, Azusa, so I'm going to show up. APU, Azusa Pacific University. No, no, no. Surprisingly enough, you're not wearing shopper. anything of theirs. No, I'm actually shocked. Wow. That I don't know. have an APU. I know. Well. There's actually a guy who wrote in. I guess last show I didn't either. But they're buying pizza for everybody at the live oh, show. That's so cool. Um, cool. Including us. Leader Tracks isn't buying anything, but they are part of Those our dogs. monthly monthly membership. Okay. Oh, they, that's great. They contribute to doing leadership stuff. YM360. Freebies for everybody? I don't Question know. Mark? We'll ask. We'll ask them. <laughs> They're great. They are great. We oh, love them. They are so those are our other sponsors that sponsor this show. And I noticed that on the blog, when we put it on the blog, we give them a little love under oh, each yeah. one. I like oh, that. Yeah. We're good. Every blog post? Every Not every blog post. Every time oh, we post Visit our sponsors. <laughs> oh. Visit our so sponsors. In encourage them. <laughs> buy their stuff. Yeah. Tell them the podcast is the greatest investment they've ever made Absolutely. in the history of I investments. seriously was texting a youth worker this morning. It registered for San Diego's Youth Workers Convention because of the show. Oh, he's gonna that's see us, cool. He's going to see us on Saturday. Just because that's the only way he has access well, to the Well, he was asking show? for a promo code, so I told him the YM Garage 2 or whatever, and he said he registered so late that the price actually went up. So he's like, ugh. So, mm. oh, well. well, somebody's going to teach these slacker <laughs> youth workers to not be late. That's what we're all Speaking about. of good deals, this is Sean Johnson from Port Deposit, Maryland. I've been meaning to send this note for a while. I want to thank you um, oh, for the membership. Being a lifesaver to me and a source of encouragement and inspiration each month. I've been struggling for a year with our youth group declining attendance, volunteers, blah, blah, blah. When I saw the advertisement that said 19 a month, I thought I'd give it a try. I've been consistently impressed by the quality, diversity, and value of the resources provided. And the $20 store credit makes it a no-brainer. No brainer. No We're going to turn that youth group around. Can we use that, Quill? Can we use, is that out there? <laughs> yeah. It's a little ne- negative. <laughs> anyway, it, Sean, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Now, you guys remember the last um, episode, 223, which is the last one we did. Yeah. Um, well, remember the Chihuahua? The, yeah, the dog, dog CPR. Dog yeah. CPR. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> How could what we was forget? That again? That was so well, weird. this person thinks they're upping the ante now. Oh, no. This is Chris Butcher, who says they're a DYM Boy, member, great. which I like that. Oh, Tell us cool. you are. Athens, Ohio. Matt, sorry you got canned. <laughs> I just watched. Did you guys see the shirts? We have shirts being made. Uh huh. Is that, sweet. Are we going to get those made? There is a guy, Eric Upton, yep. who's a DYM member, Very had clever. four shirts. Sorry, you got canned. He's a one publisher too. He's a DYM publisher. It's a oh, DYM that's publisher. Awesome, that's yeah. right. Um, there was one that was that? me that I excited about because he used a lot and is like a lot is two words oh, or something that's like awesome. that. And there was two others that <laughs> were funny. I haven't seen me a lot one. That's awesome. That's yeah, you had to scroll down, I think. Oh, my goodness. Every yeah, right. time I type the word a lot, I think of you. Good. Two words, excuse me. Thank Is you. Is it really always two words? Oh, Matt. A lot of the time. Matt, and no one dies of skin cancer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, How come spell check doesn't hey, get it there? <laughs> that, that should be a shirt, that, too. Uh, yeah. I think we've An joked more about shirt. that. I think we've joked more about that off the show than on the show. I agree. Matt's comment. Do you, were you there that day? <laughs> oh, so I just, Matt, <laughs> grievously still have yet offensive. to have a seriously talk about that but the question stands are we really making those shirts I, he's gonna try 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry you got canned. Would you be hurt by that? Like, just be honest with us as your friends. No. Would that be somewhere no. deep inside? But I'm we more would hurt. all wear them. We would still wear it even yeah. if it did. But um, it's funny. I mean, it doesn't seem my name. <laughs> so that's so maybe that would be over Matt. the far. <laughs> hey, Matt, sorry you got canned. Um, no, no, it wouldn't bother me at all. It's, I think it's funny. It's um, fine. I mean, technically, my position was terminated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really yeah. swallow with the yeah. and according to some spooning, story, man. Man. according to I mean, I, and they, they, would, the they would be happy to hire you back sometime. Yeah, exactly. yeah they would be happy. That's Future what they of the church. Said. All right, Future of the church Just would be a good shirt too. Chris Butcher. <laughs> Wait a minute, you still haven't answered my question. Yes. How come a lot is not underlined by the spell check? It's well, got to be a word. Underlined. <laughs> yeah, underlined would we'll also be underlined. <laughs> yeah, right. Matt, I don't know. Let's let's put that one on hold. Put it on the back burner. Right. I think yeah. it's a word. She won it for a while. Uh, Chris Butcher, DYM member, Athens, it Ohio. Is. Matt, sorry you got canned. I just watched episode wow. two twenty three and heard the story about another youth worker that gave a Chihuahua CPR. Wow. Okay, here's I what I here's what real. I like about <laughs> this. He revived us. Two twenty three. We're kind of on a rhythm now. <laughs> We're yeah. getting our shows up. Cricket. Totally. What's the email address to send questions? Don't know. There is no email address. It's on our website. I it thought is. it was web show yeah. at downloadyouthministry.com. No, we don't, no it, it's on. There's we a don't want to promote that. Website. We want to send them to the form. Right. Oh, okay. So we okay. can gouge okay. the web show information. Yeah. If you do. don't want to do the web show, if you don't want to go to the <laughs> website. website like right. Matt wants you to. No, this was you, your you, idea. You should send it We're to oh, oh, my web show at downloadyouthministry.com. Why isn't that what I do? What is asked of me? I get it. One thirteen p.m. Don't tune out. It's gonna get good. Hang in there. Hang in there. Let's let's just close in prayer. <laughs> All right. So I think uh, I can one-up the story. My uncle had a chihuahua that was delivering a litter of puppies. All of the puppies arrived healthy and strong except for one. It was runt the runt. of the litter. Uh -huh. It was the runt and then able to get milk from its mother. My uncle, who is 6'2 and 250 pounds. Wow. So that's like... 40 There's pounds less than me. A lot of man and a foot taller. Yeah, than that is a lot of man. <laughs> or a little bit less man. I mean, Got down on the ground and began to <laughs> milk the chihuahua right in order to oh, get milk into a bottle for the puppy. So the guy's milking the chihuahua. Wow. I'm not sure what was funny. Beautiful. The look of shame on my uncle's face. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> or the chihuahuas. chihuahua milk. <laughs> Anybody can give a dog CPR, but it takes a special person to milk one. If that story doesn't earn some swag, I don't know it what will. Wow. Thank That's you fair. so much. That's I mean, if it was him and not his uncle, yeah. But it is truly that could be a blessing. the t-shirt. I milked a chihuahua. I'm lived to tell about it. <laughs> I milked a chihuahua. Wow. Yeah, I lived to tell about it. Oh, hey, you're going to get your goodness. swag. Chris Butcher yep. with the membership. Yeah, it. enjoy. It's, it's all kinds of swag. <laughs> the membership is so good, we're basically... We swag every month. Yeah. We are hey, giving and too And anybody much that's a member at YS, we have a shirt yeah, for you. Yeah, free t-shirt. Come, all come to the DYM Or booth. if you become a member, are we going give to them, give them a t-shirt too? Uh, That'd be fun. I think so. I think we have a That'd lot of t-shirts. Cool what partner? shirts are we doing? Is this the I Got Canned? No, I just said uh, I downloaded this shirt. Oh, this one I downloaded. Yeah, shirt. Shirt. Um, okay, here's some serious. Yeah. Here's some serious stuff. Oh, questions from the community. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of. I'm getting a lot of email oh, about. It's getting serious. Our podcast not being on iTunes. I me, I me too. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was just pointing to anyone. It could have been anyone. Is I was it pointing all Matt? It's probably I, me. I'm no. so Katie, sorry. Katie's I'm a so total sorry. slacker. No, we're gonna have to shift gears on that. That's actually one of the things I want to talk about. I think maybe we need to change negotiation. Good cop, bad cop. Bad okay, cop, bad so yeah. it's yeah. broken right now. Yeah, and it's okay. been broken for ten shows, and it's embarrassing. Okay, and and this is Jerry, Jerry Varner, who uh -huh. we know and love, and yes. is part of our community. Are we going to have a community piece on our site where people can interact? Maybe. maybe. Yeah, I think we should have a. So we like got a, a maybe and a yeah. I should. Let's get iTunes working I first. I say yes. Let's do <laughs> it. I say yes too. Because you haven't heard from him, right? Okay, we're not going to solve the problem here. But, but, yeah, but yeah. I can get angry about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh. That's true. All right, All right. Jerry. Well, I downloaded the show. Things are coming. By we're working I on it, meaning we're shirt. frustrated by it. I couldn't it. download and the podcast. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Should we close in prayer again? Yeah, seriously. It's <laughs> frustrating. A lot of so people hard. are writing in about that. Let's see if we can bring this show back to life wah, wah. like, like oh, the poor on. chihuahua puppy. <laughs> Kevin <laughs> Kloss. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> What? What? It says oh, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs>
Why don't, you, why don't you let me? Don't use my why name. Why don't you let me? Just, you, you've made a mistake. On that. Let me a few just times go before? ahead and leave the show. Okay. okay, you just show up late and. No, I was early. Um, Gosh, so what's going on? You know who is late today? Yeah, okay. the queen. Hey. <clears throat> don't read my name. Just kidding. Make sure Doug is on top of it. So that's what Matt got all excited about. Oh, thinking that when I said no, I was trying to save the Love person. Love your sensitivity. Uh-huh. That comes out. Kevin really, is from Lakewood, so. Washington. Uh, I just <laughs> lost. Katie's taking shots. I just lost a lot of students last year because we had a large senior class. The rest of our high school group is mostly juniors. We're lacking in ninth and 10th grade students. I'm really trying to get our students to invite their friends more and more and share their faith at school, but it's really difficult to inspire them. Even our student leadership team says openly that they know they're supposed to, but they really don't want to because it's so difficult. At first I was disappointed and then I realized that I'm really bad at outreach in my own life. So I decided I need to practice sharing the gospel and reaching out to those in my community more myself. Awesome. I also know I need to pray for the students more in this area as well. Other than teaching on outreach, practicing outreach personally, and praying for students, what are some suggestions that you would give me for inspiring students to reach their friends more with the gospel and also invite them to youth group? I really want to see the youth in my area learn more about Jesus and give their lives to him, even if it gets them plugged into another local youth group. I just really want to see more life change in our area. Mm. That's and awesome. he says, oh, episode 223 is the first time I have not seen Doug wear an APU shirt in a long time. <laughs> that is it's funny. It's a laundry day. That's, That's hilarious. hilarious. That's hilarious. All right, so question about question. outreach evangelism. Good question, good self-awareness. Absolutely. I love is that he already has some steps in mind. One of the things that we I just Kevin's did. Kevin's a DYM member, too. I think oh. he is. Hey, I'm an original DYM member. Wow, wow. there you go. Um, I think he's funny. I think he's ooh. a guy that has written some funny stuff to us. Yeah. Not that that really matters, right? But I like. Funny but we're stuff. here for you. Okay. You're leading it. I'm ready to hear. What one you of the things say. that we did, it, actually, this past weekend, we kind of launched a new friendship evangelism <laughs> challenge with our youth ministry, yeah. and we. One of the things that I wanted to do was put students up in front to share their story of how they came to Jesus. And we had three students share this weekend, and each one of them was reached by someone in the youth ministry. So one was, you know, her older sister reached out to her. One was this guy watched these two other students, their lives for a long time, and then finally, you know, yep, whatever, yep. and the other guy was just invited by a friend. Mm-hmm. So I think sharing stories of the students that are already in your youth ministry, and or or as they yeah. become part of your youth ministry, put those stories in front, well, could have a huge impact. It's exciting. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's exciting to hear that and to, for other people to Absolutely. see Absolutely. So we want to say, look at, look at what happened here with these lives. Now go and, and share Jesus with others. Yeah. Yeah. And that series is actually going to go up on DYM here yeah, pretty quick. Yeah, really soon. Yeah. And then there's also, we have a tool that we did, um, Salt and Light Journal, which is something that we gave to yeah. all our students that it reinforces the same things that you Absolutely. guys are talking about. We've got a new small group curriculum that we're using this fall in our high school ministry that will also be on DYM. It's called Be a Bringer. And it's kind of a really fresh take on the classic French evangelism. Mm-hmm. So, and by yeah. fresh means it just looks cool. It's the same yeah, stuff. The same <laughs> you know, share yeah. your story, yeah. pray for your friends, invite them to church. You know, but yeah. it, it's well, good stuff. What I like about Kevin's comment is him saying that I want them to learn more about Jesus, even if they go to a different youth group. I feel it's like awesome. a lot of times we get we hear youth workers we get questions about I want to grow my group. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the the end game is growth. Yeah. And what I hear here is the end game is Jesus. And good stuff. I like that. And I think if we keep the end, you know, we're, we're not ultimately responsible for growth. We're, you know, that's that's Jesus' job. We're yeah, I think if you responsible could be... pointing them to Jesus. And I like that. That's a, I just appreciate yeah. that. And I think that's sometimes we, we're all, we always want to be about more numbers, more numbers, more numbers. And what I like, what I hear about him is more Jesus. Mm. Yeah, it's great. Well, you have to be intentional, and you take it to a point, and then the results you do. You have to let go of the results. If you're not talking about evangelism, I love that you said, man, you need to pick up the game, your game in this area in your own life. I think that's great. But I think just being intentional and just reminding your people on a regular basis is great. And being yeah. practical by sharing stories or being practical by... Um, you know, de demystifying it with the uh, you know here's the four spiritual laws. Memorize these and go talk to anybody you see. And by the way, let them know they're going to burn in hell. And you know, I mean, that's yeah, yeah. that's tough. 
And that's totally. tough, except for the 2% of humanity that has that kind of um, either personality type or self-righteousness that makes them to, to do that. that but like that. to encourage people to pray and to encourage people to serve in just natural ways. And when the time is right, they'll speak up. Well, I think that's a good, because he says he's talked to his students and they're, you know, they know they're supposed to do it, but they're not doing it. I think yeah. even just presenting, like you said, just some fresh ways for them to evangelize that, you know, prayer, for them to even begin by praying for yeah. their friends is a yeah. huge thing. And not everything has to be an invitation to accept Jesus, you know, as evangelism. There's right. so many great steps leading to that and other people to partner with our students. So even just painting a picture of it doesn't have to be scary to pray, to just have conversations yeah, well, about answers, your own life, you know, yeah, those things. Be perfect. Yeah. I think, too, with not having a lot of ninth and 10th graders, it might be good to meet with your junior high pastor and just... The students that have come in, some ninth graders and juniors and seniors are in a little bit of a different place yeah. when it comes to inviting their friends and what they'll invite their friends to. So even maybe for those yeah. younger students, you know, kind yeah, of thinking through good. what could be a, a great transition for them to to this. Well, and what about just some baby steps too, like yeah. some social media? Like if you posted an Instagram that had an evangelistic, you know, or, or here's fun at youth group, that is yeah. an evangelistic message that's yeah. being shared. So. I think encourage them to think a little bit with the technology. Social that's media too. definitely gives students a lot, a, a lot of steps that they can do yeah. almost safely. I agree. You know, with, I agree. With, you know, and still putting themselves out there, but at the same time, you know, they're at their computer or on their phone. So exactly, it's you know, it's there's subtle. good options there. Yeah, yeah. love it. Um, I think there's a leadership piece that he addresses about him, himself, but a bigger picture is, you know, as leaders. Let's say he was nailing evangelism, just nailing. Kids are sharing their faith, they're inviting their friends, there's just new life change stories. On. Yeah. There's gonna be something else in his ministry that he could write us about yeah. and say, you know, I just, my volunteers, I just don't have, long, or, you know, we're not good at discipleship, or, right. you know, Every, we don't, what, everything's good whatever it is, it really comes, oftentimes comes back to a question about leadership. What are we communicating all the yeah. time? You totally. know, you just can't you can't teach on a, a three week series on evangelism and go, okay, We're done. they got it. Yeah, <laughs> got it. <laughs> totally. You know, you got to keep keep coming back to it. So I I appreciate that. Yeah, no, that's good work. All right, this is from Brian, who did write into the web show at downloadyouthministry.com. Oh, Maybe it went through our website and then just forwarded it to me. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Brian says, I'm a member. Your resources are awesome. I'm inter- I am have an interesting situation. My wife is an early childhood teacher. We'll be the judge of whether or not it's interesting. Right? <laughs> I am a student pastor and collegiate campus minister, and I still have to work a part-time job to make ends meet. I have mentioned my frustration to my pastor, and he said it is only for a season. I understand this, but I just need some encouragement from other youth workers. Oh, not to mention, I don't even have a functional office to plan for the two or three lessons I plan each week. Any encouragement and advice would be appreciated. Side note, do DYM resource submissions need graphics? No, they don't need graphics. And figure out when the end of that season is. (laughs) If it's a season, that implies that your senior pastor has a plan. Yeah. So I'd say go after what that plan is because you can do seasons for a while, but they're hard on ministry, they're hard on marriage, they're hard on family, they're hard on everybody. So I think it'd be great to get some clarity on when that season's going to end. Yeah. Yeah. you got to do what you can to define the external factors, if that's the elder board or a budget level or the senior pastor making a decision. But you also need to look internally and say, okay, how long am I going to put up with this? I mean... And, you know, put up is another way to say endure. And so how long are you going to, how long are you going to stick it out? Because if you don't have, if you don't know what that is, at some point you're going to start getting better. At some point you're going to start, you know, regretting and, and entitled and it's just, it'll get ugly. It'll get ugly quick. And so seasons seasons are tough and this is this is a totally tough situation to want to have full-time focus on your passion yet have to be divided with you know working here and doing this and two or three teachings a week i mean that is yeah that is even, crazy even ending off some of that would be a great step yeah, too yeah 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 just to try to find some balance and margin <clears throat> so yeah did we give encouragement you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Done. No, it is, I mean, yeah. But you need people. Who else? You know, who's pouring into you? 
you know, I think sometimes when you're in your toughest seasons is when spend time with the people that are that are your encouragers yeah. and cheerleaders and helping you kind of navigate. I think that's a big deal. Yeah. So there is, um, you know, I was kind of reading some questions and setting them into two piles because we need we need some questions for our show with the yeah. live show we're doing in a few days at YS. And um, just you know, continually reminded. I you know I don't know why I forget it, but there's just a lot of discouraged people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think discouragement um, is fertilized by loneliness. So we can be discouraged, but we have each other. I mean, we have team. Mm-hmm. You sure. know, and sure, I think yeah. that's one of the reasons people like the podcast so much because it feels like a sense of because they're team. sitting right they're, there. They yeah. have that. They I'd have that chair. Say fermented than fertilized. <laughs> well, you're always no, you're always positive. You think positive. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, Underlined did that one in my journal. Fumigated. <laughs> a lot of times. A lot. A lot of times. <laughs> um, well, I, I just think there is a piece of being being relational that um, can change that. So. For example, when you're so busy, you're working two, three jobs, you got a part-time job, you're writing lessons, you know, your spouse is, you know, working as well. You're so busy that the relational element falls to the side. Yeah. I, you know, I just don't have time to meet a buddy for coffee because I got to finish this message or I don't have time to go exercise with my neighbors because, you know, that mountain bike ride's going to take too long and I got to get this thing done. So in the midst of that loneliness, that discouragement just, you know, becomes even bigger. But there are for times um, for mess, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. As it were. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm I'm happy to just acquiesce and let you win, so you'll shut up. It's a uh, win, and so I won't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot what I was saying. Now uh, loneliness. It yeah. is. A, yeah, it is but there have been times where we have had we've been discouraged, totally coming into. <laughs> It, let's say we come into a podcast. Yeah. And Josh and I are waiting on Katie and Matt, who are typically late. And, you know, we can talk for five minutes. Yeah. And sometimes that discouragement can, yeah, absolutely. can disappear. Totally. So, absolutely. I, you know, part of it is yeah. that, that trigger when you said be around people. Totally. Well, and, you, you know, we talk about network and, you know, even just trying to seek that out. Sometimes you have to be intentional to seek it out. Because there are times where we have felt lonely even in the midst of team, you yeah. know, where we're yeah. going through something you know that's just us and so you really have to be intentional i think to connect with people and i think when you're in a season like this especially you know carve out the time and maybe that's using dym's messages so that you're only writing one a week and you're using someone that's else's good. and that's good okay point. you know that's i'm gonna for start this doing that season. too yeah, you know. <laughs> wait a minute start you already were <laughs> Yeah. Look at you and me okay. just being encouraging to grip. Yeah. <laughs> Fertilize this. Mm. Um, Did you acquiesce or capitulate? I don't know. Uh, this is from Darren, Penn Forest Worship Center. I just moved in May from a traditional church with a youth group of church kids to a less traditional church with a lot of unchurched and de-churched students. What's the church? You went know. to a church and you don't like it anymore? Probably is that what you're D-Church over, is? You're over we it? gotta ask the tattoo guys. I don't know. Yeah. What does D-Church Have mean? Have you ever been to church? Probably church. They used to go to church and don't go to church anymore. And then they came back. Now they came back. Right. Okay. So like to call them re the church out of re so, uh, <laughs> Get that out of there. Talk about church. fertilization. There's so, some fertilization. On churches, right. they've never been to church. D churches, former churchgoers that are yeah. back. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Here we go. But you're too, I mean. That's a lot of history to happen by the time you're in high school. I mean, to be that in a is. church and... I don't know. Okay. Now we, we know who you're talking about. All right. <laughs> Got a lot of clarity. Got a lot of clarity there. A okay, keep clarity. going. Here's Currently, some encouragement. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> we need that guy. Currently, our, our midweek right. program yeah. consists of a classic model of game, announcements, live worship, and a message. As opposed to dead worship. Uh, which is yeah. no offense to your church. Oh, uh, Matt got canned. Wow. It's okay. No. Um, I yeah, want to try to step now, out of that Matt model. <laughs> What's that? I said that to your church now, buddy. <laughs> I want to try to step out of that model and try to cater to students that are unchurched. What are some ideas of non-traditional elements to include during a midweek youth service that would cater more to unchurched students? 
<laughs> Thanks for all you guys do. I love DYM. I'm a rewinder that has benefited from your wisdom for several years. Well, I, I think the the easy place to start, if this is your goal, I mean, if your goal is to go after the re-unchurched people, um, to me, the music part is the is the first thing I'd look at and think about and wonder about cutting. Because I think that music worship live worship i think that's i think that's cool i think that's good i really i really like that new people who come to church almost never sing not high school kids i think that even right, don't get it. yeah i mean even when you're you're pushing it and pushing it and pushing it it's still you know the percentage of your students singing i think you know in the 18 years or whatever that that when you first started it's at Saddleback to where it is now, I think now you guys have the highest percentage of people singing in your your weekend services. I mean, would you? It's pretty high. Yeah. I'd say 4 or 5% probably. No. Okay. No, <laughs> that's not true. Junior high is a little different, right? Because kids engage. Junior high, we do, well, I would just say we do a lot more celebration, upbeat. Yeah. We aren't doing like... You know, the 10-minute stairway worship song, or yeah. stairway to heaven version of worship yeah. songs. You know, we're doing like, you know, yeah. just kind of quick and upbeat and keep like that. Because junior highs have a hard time clicking in or even understanding the vocab in some of, you know, the, the yeah. more slower, right. intense songs. So I try to be really intentional to in say, music, hey. just like making sure the vocab's easy. They understand what they're saying yeah. and singing, and it's always an education piece in junior high. So, but it's we kind of keep it fun. Right. Yeah. Well, so but in the twenty years of high school that you first came, you know, the high school's never been bigger, never been reaching more. I mean, it's it's the biggest it's been, right? I yeah. mean, I'm, a, I'm a, yeah. and probably have the highest percentage of people singing, even ten years ago, whenever, which is huge, which is huge, and which is awesome. But part of that is because maybe a large part of it. I mean, you've had the same person doing music right. for 14 years, right? right? And so that's... Skill, and we have a farm lot of student system. A ton yeah. of students. And so there's so a helps. legacy of singing songs sure. that it works at an outreach program right. because there's so many people involved. And the skill level of the band is really, really high. So even if you don't yeah. like the songs or they don't get the words, the quality of the music and the it's good. Yeah. It's really yeah. good. But I think like... <clears throat> You know, I mean, yeah. at <laughs> most most youth ministries aren't aren't like that, and I have seen a hundred youth ministries, so I couldn't tell you that it's most across the country. But but if you're looking at an evangelistic program, I mean, look you'd around, say cut the music. I would say consider cutting the music. I think what you teach on is a really big deal in an evangelistic program, and even not having it just be straight guy up there teaching. What if you try? What if you varied the model and it was discussion and questions and topics that they care about and hot button yeah. issues that students disagree with the church on? That would be awesome to take those on. Not easy, yeah. and I wouldn't wish that on anybody. But man, if you want to reach on save, yeah, do church some, people, do some topics that are gonna do a Q and A that in, that involves some of the five hot topics. You know that. <clears throat> That's going to fill up your room. Well, and have you taken the time to really understand who your unchurched audience is? You know, who who yeah, are the are kids into? that you're what trying like? to reach? You know, who, uh, where are they at? And yeah, what are they into? What are they, you know, even using some of your your few students that you have to kind of educate you on the pulse, so that you're teaching on stuff or attracting students to something that they want to come to. You know, yeah. and I think yeah. understanding your audience is a big piece of that. So. You part. I think a large part of it, it. This is great about asking a question and wondering what to do. But you, you really need to develop your own conviction on what on what you think your people need. Because as far as when it comes to evangelism and how far are you going to go to reach the lost? I mean that there's there's no line there. I mean you know you can you can barely talk about the Bible and Jesus and just be real nice and you know hand out a cup of cold water in His name, whatever that is. A cup of cold water is. Is great games and, and engaging conversation great, you know? Right. But you have to decide. You have to decide what you want to do to point these people to Jesus. I mean, at some point, you know, you can do all fun and games and well, and you could even never just crack the Bible. go the opposite direction too, and just do serve projects because a lot of students that aren't followers of Jesus are very socially minded, want to help the community. So that would be a whole different way of approaching yeah. evangelism and reaching the church too. Yeah. You've been very quiet, Fields. What do you got? Well, I, I, you know, to me, it comes down to, it always comes down to relationships for me. You're not going to reach, you're not going to reach teenagers in a community and get them to the church 
by having a traditional program of games and music and a message. No matter how ex, even if the music is excellent, yeah. you know, fourteen year farm system of whatever, the best games, a yeah. great speaker. If there's not a relational connection, you know, out there. So to me, it goes back to kind of that first question where he was saying, you know, our student leaders they know they should, but they don't they want don't. to. Yeah. That you know, at the core, of, the core of evangelism are those life change stories that you were talking about that point back to a, a relational connection. Yeah. So. To me, I think just about anything you do can be effective as long as you have some kids who are going, you know what, I really care about my friends, yeah. and and I want to bring them to whatever this yeah. is. So to me, I, was, I think so many youth workers are looking for what is the magic formula on Wednesday night. And you know we go to other you go after other churches, churches, kids. and what? Well, you go after other churches. Go, <laughs> boy, a, they're big. What are they doing? Okay, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that. Yeah. I'm going to take that. And we want to put that in the magic formula. But really, the you know the magic formula is some kids who are who are excited about Jesus, and they have a heart for their friends, and they want to reach them, and and that may mean bringing them on a Wednesday night. That may mean inviting them to something at your school that you you know you ditch meeting yeah. in the youth room and you meet on the campus it may mean a service project yeah but i i think just my mind was going as you guys were talking that really at the core it goes back to that relation who do, who do i have relationships with so yeah. you know as leaders we help our kids with a bigger worldview that don't just hang out with your six best friends at youth group right you know look for somebody doesn't we know just you. create a little holy huddle and you know let's let's be you know in the world yeah. And developing relationships, and so yeah. I don't know. You know, I I think as I've gotten older and watched my own kids go through the youth group and go, you know, sometimes, you know, Cassie might have had a better ministry to the twelve girls on her volleyball team playing volleyball than, right. you know, I didn't feel bad when she missed a Wednesday night small group. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, did she well, was, was she still connected with that small group leader? Yes. Was there still accountability in her life? Yes. Did she still have spiritual relationships there? Yes. But I think early on when I didn't have teenagers, I thought it was all about attendance. Man, if they're not coming to my programs, they're just not spiritually mature. And then I've just you know, watched my own kids and others going, you know, their spiritual maturity goes with them wherever they go, if they have it. Yeah. And, you know, she had a heart for evangelism and could minister to kids on her volleyball team. So anyway, that's just where my mind was going. Cool. I'd have I'd have next steps in mind, you know, whatever it is you did to to change this program. I mean, if we want to say dumb it down, you know, or make it less spiritual or whatever, um, you know, you could call it that. I don't necessarily think that that's totally accurate, but I do think that if you're going after a specific target, you want to know what's next for them. You know, you want to know what's next and be pushing them to something more and something and something. Deeper. Well, and, you know, and maybe not even something more or something deeper, Matt. Maybe it's just something different. That maybe it's not pushing them to, you know, different is is maybe sideways to a certain, you know, they're just not connecting at that yeah. Wednesday night fun and game type thing. So maybe it's a sideways to a certain yeah, to you know, a service project or something. But I do agree with your next steps. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything else on that? Well, that's good. Yeah. I canceled music at Saddleback for 10 months and it was it was a big decision. That was a big decision. It was a big decision. So at our, evangel at our evangelistic program, we didn't have music for, for ten months. Yeah, but I, I thought it was good. I mean, I, I agree with you on the connection piece, though. I don't think it really matters how how excellent and fun my service is. I mean, I want it to be excellent. I want it to be fun. I want it there to be great yeah. elements for my students. But my students, I don't. They won't walk through the door unless they have a connection. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, I think it's a both and of being in and being out. But I think the connection piece is so huge. Yeah. You know, there's so many kids that even I would consider a core student who will go up to church with their parents versus coming in if they don't, if they're coming at an off time that they don't know they're going to know someone. Mm -hmm. It's just walking through the door is such a connection piece. Well, and, but when the church comes alongside and provides something, like you were saying, hot topics, I mean, let's yeah. go to the sex deal. Sure. Right. We know right. that the high school ministry, we can grow that by yeah. a large percent yeah. when we do a sex series that kids again there's some legacy totally. piece to it Absolutely. because they've either heard it 
or yep. heard about or it. Older yeah. sister heard yeah. about it. Something and like that. You can't miss totally. that. And, yeah. And so there, therefore, why do the numbers increase? They're not just increasing with church kids coming For out. Sure. They're increasing because, you know, oh gosh, my church is doing something. You've got to hear this. You know, you right. can't see right. this. You know. Legacy piece is important. It's funny. In my two years before I got canned, the first time we did the sex series, our numbers didn't didn't get a lot bigger. Just a tiny, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Um, and so we did like a four week series or something like that, and um, and it was good. It was it was a good series, but it was the second time around that people really brought their friends to, and it grew. And to me, the learning there was, you know, they didn't know what to expect. You know, and it was wild. Yeah, almost and unsafe to bring your was, friends to yeah, the first yeah. time. No, was, I mean, it was <laughs> crazy like we normally, yeah. you know, like we do. I mean, it was on the edge and serious and, and yeah. totally open talk. And biblical. But yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they didn't know what to expect the first time. And so I needed, to, I, needed to earn some <laughs> trust. I needed to earn some trust for that to really. Um, Dave. The third time would have been great. But Grig- you know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, again. sorry, guys. Yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry, your position was terminated. Uh, <laughs> a lot. You should teach it to adults at your church. Now. <laughs> Seriously, I love it. Dave Grigliotti, <laughs> who is from much of the Orland Park, <laughs> Illinois. Just I take that class. <laughs> I'm a so big fan and follower for all you've been doing for a while. I've been in youth ministry full time for eight years. Um, blah, 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 blah. Think of the, oh. blah, blah, blah. Here's the question. Here we go. We wrote. <laughs> no, no, it's just all it's, it's just all dog. pandering of joy to my heart. Oh, okay. Oh, um, that's nice. Hmm. I've been trying to find resources, articles, and anything else on youth ministry communication and follow-up plans and processes. Mm. I'm wanting to put together a written plan <laughs> for how our youth ministry would communicate all its info to all the needed people. Also, how our youth ministry would follow up with first-time youth, youth who have gone astray. I'm looking specifically for examples of a written-up plan, which I don't think we have examples of written-up plan. I was going to say, if you're a (laughs) DYM or if you're you know web show listener and you have one, send it in. We'll get it to them. Um, But so let's talk about communication follow-up. Yeah. Well, Let's there make are, this our last one. There Let's are a couple strong, resources. Doc. There's a couple resources on the site. Wore your glasses today. I'm not oh, sure you're honest. I, I, he's bit, really tired. It's a little I'm bit really tired, tired so I couldn't get contacts in my eyes today. So I was Is like, that really forget it. Is? Yeah, I was just I gave up. So I'm wearing glasses today. Um, I would say we do have a couple resources on Download Youth Ministry that have like letters and templates and example things that would work for some of the follow up things that you address. But quite honestly, I don't think I do follow up super well, so I'm not sure I should yeah, be answering I mean, it's, this. It's hard. I think uh, there's. Oh, I will throw out one thing, and then I'll. I was going to take the punt there. I thought you, you were punting. The uh, I, I was punting, but I'll say this: I like youth. Our youth group, our main large group time, being without a lot of card swipe, sign in. Like yeah. it's a little bit anonymous. And that is a strategy. I lose out on some of the follow-up that we could do. I can't send automated texts or postcards or we don't use Fellowship One software to whatever. But I kind of like that really low barrier to entry. You can show up and you can be anonymous in this group of 50 people or whatever. You have cards that people can fill out. But when they're ready to take a next step, we're all over it. As soon as we get a card. Even if you had something, I mean, it feels a little bit like... No, I get it. I mean, you could still be anonymous and and have something in play, right? So right. You just, you just can't you're, scan you're just lazy. You I'm just, just lazy. Can't scan no. the barcode. I think you have. If you're going to have some sort of system, you have to have somebody to maintain a system. And it's I just would say for, for both of us, that's Epic not our fail. Strength. Yeah, maintain anything. So no. I mean, we did have a time in high school ministry where we had you know remember we had Cindy coming in every um, Monday a volunteer mom who came in every Monday to maintain all the follow up stuff and when she left I feel like follow up no one followed up on that you know I mean it's just you really do need to it's a part I think you have to have if you're going to create a system you need to have a, a it needs to be easy and sustainable. To maintain that system, which I, I would agree. just say has just not been our strength. It maybe. has eluded so. me. So now I call it a strategy. <laughs> <laughs> but I've always done. I think there's three things that you could think. <laughs> you have three steps to follow. Yeah, I think there's three things that you could think through. Um, I don't think that you necessarily do this every week or even every quarter. But I think that if this is an area that you think you need to work on in your ministry, I think there's three, there's three different areas that you can look at. The first one 
and I've, I've done this a couple of times. When I went into high school ministry for the first time, uh, or as a new person, it, the easiest thing to change was the communication because it's not going to hurt anybody's feelings and that only is good yeah. with parents. And, you know, and so even when I took this new position I'm in, easiest thing to up the game on was to think about communication because it doesn't hurt anybody's feelings, blah, blah, blah. So that's, that's, I've done some thinking on this because of that. Um, but I think the first thing is to, to take, take a moment to go, okay, what are my messages? What are the, what are the things that I want to communicate? And for most of the time, it's just your events, you know, and, and, yeah. and programs. But I think that there's also stuff too, like strategy. Like what are the things that you want to repeat and, and say often? And so if you want to talk about evangelism, well, this is one of my messages. One of my messages is, hey, you got to bring friends or, hey, you got to pray or, hey, whatever your, your message is on that. You want to you want to make a list of that. You want to identify what are the main messages of our ministry. What's the core? What's the core that we're about? I think then you want to stop and take a look at what are some avenues or channels for your communication. You know, like you can have something in a bulletin. You could have an announcement. You can put something um, on your Facebook or your Twitter. You, if you have a web page or a blog, like just to think through what are what are all your different ways that you can yeah. communicate. And yeah, this is a huge thing. Once you think about your messages and some channels, you're like, holy smokes, there's, there's a ton of stuff. Um, and then I think that a really minor thing to think about is who are your audience is, you know, too, as far as, um, you know, your, your team, your volunteer, your adult leaders, your, even to think through your staff and your supervisor and to think through uh, your regular, you know, your main ministry <clears throat> and then maybe even parents, you know, so that you, you're kind of sitting there and you're totally overwhelmed because you've got your messages, you've got some channels, you've got your audiences and then, you know, just go ahead and cry if you want to do that. <laughs> but I think that the next, the next step is to really go and then you look at a calendar and say, what's realistic for me? If I have a volunteer, if I have have somebody that can do something um, at my church now we've got the, I've got this super awesome you know volunteer he's totally nerdy and and loves he, he does most of our posts on our website and he does cool. you know he does a lot of stuff like that and so we have more online because I've got somebody that can help and can do that but I think you look at these things you think what's really important what do I really need to get out there and then you pull out a calendar and you say okay well every week I'm gonna do this and once a month I'm gonna do that Sweet. So let it be written. So I think written. when it comes to follow-up, let me make a last comment of follow-up. It's all about relationships. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. It's all about relationships. Well, let's think about it. If we say to kids, we love you, we care about you, you're part of a family, okay? So we make these value statements that they're part of a family, and then a kid goes missing three weeks or four weeks, and that family doesn't know that he or she is missing. Right. They're not really part of a family. Right. So we know we're part of a spreadsheet. Well, we know the, the couple things. We, 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 we can say that, but we need to figure out how do we live it out. The bigger you get in your ministry, the more difficult it is to follow up on people. Just sheer numbers. Yeah. But that's why we can unapologetically say, "Hey, you, you may." Uh, you may get lost here on Sunday morning, Wednesday night, whatever. We don't want you to, but the greatest way for you to feel loved and connected and family, the whole bit, is for you to be in a small group. So then we can create more unapologetic follow-up in that small group. Yeah, the onus is on the small group leader. Abs Somebody misses absolutely. two weeks. You absolutely. Should. So as a leader of ministry, then I go, you know, I don't have to be responsible. You know, we used to talk about that. Anybody who's in a small group, we're not responsible for follow up with them. Yeah. Now, if you're not in a small group, yeah. then we're going to try to figure out how do we how do we track that. So when we would sit at tables, mm -hmm. we'd have them circle their name, mm -hmm. and you know each week, then we yeah. could kind of go through and this person. Oh, I know that person. Now, when our youth group was smaller, we first started like when Katie was in high school. You know, my phrase was "live out of our mailing list" because the idea. Back oh, that's then, so funny because I just was saying that to, yeah, you to know, one of our back leaders. in the day there wasn't. You know, and it was a mailing list. You actually mailed stuff to people. So we'd have a list of here's the 18, 32, 45 kids in our group. And yeah. after hey, Wednesday when was the last, night. Where's Bobby? I didn't see Bobby last well, week. Well, on Wednesday Who's, night, you, you know. just go, yep, there, 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 there. Oh, yeah. okay, it wasn't there. It wasn't there. But once it, once it once it gets know, to, yeah. you know, larger than your capacity, you're, you're, you know. And that's what we've said on this show over the years. Whatever follow-up system you come up with, you have to reinvent it every six months anyway, because uh, something something breaks down. Well, 
improve it as to take away. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think it's strategic to focus on people who are missing, people that were there and and are gone, and people that are new. I mean, that maybe goes without saying, but, you know, obviously that doesn't mean you want to ignore the people that are there. You know, it is a, it is good to write a note to people around and, and stuff yeah. like that. But visitors, I mean, you want to keep your visitors and the people that leave, you yeah. know, you want to take care of the people entrusted to you. Yeah. yeah and I just think, we, you know, statement and, that, you know, we try to do a really good job of not just playing big church question answer here. Sure. Totally. And uh, but the reality is, when you the bigger you get, the more difficult that that becomes. So it just means the more intentional and strategic you need to become. Mm -hmm. Much like you were being a dad. Yeah. This last week, thirty seconds. I had fun. I took my son, my second born, on his boy becomes a man trip. We went to Texas and we talked about all the stuff that boys need to hear about. And where'd you talk about, like in a restaurant? Um, all throughout the whole trip. So at restaurants, in the car, at the ball game, we did a bunch of guy things, we went go-karting. We had ribs like three or four times. It was an absolute blast. Yeah, we had So youthpastordiet.com? Go out the window, five days off, and it felt so good. <laughs> Back on it today. Yeah. Lean me. Oh. You look great. So uh, great, trying. yeah, great. And you put that on your blog, great dad stuff. It was really fun. Stuff. I came back from that trip completely exhausted. Yeah. We just ran and laughed and played, and he asked some really good questions. Did he? About really good things. Give that, us some of the questions. Um, I don't think I can on the air. <laughs> no, they were guy. They were they were guy uh, questions. Awesome. It was father son stuff that yep. they, most people don't talk about. So I told him, I said, buddy, this isn't the only time we're going to talk about these things. This isn't like the talk. This is going to be one of many times. This is an open, yep. Yep. open conversation. So we talked about identity, obviously sex. But peer pressure, pornography. There's so many things I want to say right now. <laughs> so did he, every, did he respond different than your, your oldest son? Um, yeah, my oldest son was like linear, technical, like detailed, and kind of like got it and was like, okay, sure. I got it. And Austin, number two, was just like, really? <laughs> really? That's, wow. Like just couldn't, it just was totally blown his mind. It was great. It was really great. That's great. Didn't you? Didn't you use Jim Burns's book? Oh yeah, with Max and Mark, my two oldest. It was great. It was, it was hilarious. That's I mean, awesome. it was serious and silly at the same time. No, I would say we great. had that. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, I mean, to seri to be like, well, I mean, that's just not our personality. But I mean, to be like, well, this is the, you know. Yeah. I had, I had <laughs> identifying body I, parts. You know, is that what that was? I have one. <laughs> this is the hmm, one son. So when I was doing the <laughs> the one son talk, like. Girls were out of town for the weekend. We, after a baseball game, we went to his favorite restaurant. Oh. We're away from everybody. It was strategic time away. And I'm like, okay, son. And we start talking. He goes, I need a refill. And he just, <laughs> just grabbed his cup and got up and walked I can totally see him doing that, too. Oh, I love it. Uh, one, of, one of the pages in Jim Burns' book, which the book is for six to eight-year-olds. And I, some of the stuff I was like, whoa, six-year-olds. Way to go, Jim. You know, so Mike was like nine and ten when we did it or yeah. nine and eleven or something. And uh, there's one page that it's like the safety page, the stranger danger page. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. it all like, you know, just the point of the page, it says, you know, no one is supposed to look or touch your bathing, your private parts or something like that. And Max, my oldest, just lost it. I mean, he just, he was laughing a deep, like he, his body was no longer laughing, his soul was <laughs> laughing and just erupting at him. And so it was great. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. it was hilarious. Good. Uh, Maybe that's what that we stuff. call the, the title of the show. Stranger. Soul laughter. Stranger danger, soul laughter, the sex talk. Uh, all, the, all those stranger oh, danger. Good times, good all right. home, but that was Number fun. 224. In the can. All right. Love See you guys. You It'll be up on the podcast. Never. <laughs> no, tonight. Tonight. It'll be up on iTunes. Never. Yeah, iTunes. <laughs> but it'll be no, on YouTube and back. the show page it's right coming yeah, back. I yeah. think we need to do right. our own YouTube feed. All right. Let's yes. talk about that. Adios. Okay. Are we done? Who's doing, Who's in charge of this thing? I know.